Hi guys, it's MTG here, and today I got my Just Black Pixel 2 XL in the mail. I'll be unboxing the retail packaging and show you what comes in the box, and I'll also be physically comparing it to the iPhone 8 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Let's get right into it. When you first open the box, you are presented with the phone itself. I will set that aside for now. Underneath the phone, you'll find a Welcome to Team Pixel packet. In here, you'll find a SIM ejector tool, a quick start guide that has helpful diagrams to help you get started with your new phone, and another small pamphlet that will tell you about Pixel Care and other warranty information. Setting this aside, we see a USB-C to USB Type-A adapter. This will allow you to easily transfer all of your information from a previous device, whether it be an Android device or an iPhone. Looking under this little compartment, we can see that Google has included a USB-C to 3.5mm headphone jack adapter. As you probably already know, Google has elected to go the Apple route and eliminated the headphone jack on their new devices. Now you'll have to use a dongle like this to use wired headphones. Also included is a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is actually very interesting because this is the first phone that I've seen including a cable with USB-C on both sides of the cable. For me, I have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, so this will make charging from my laptop and data transfer a lot easier since I don't have to use a dongle. The USB-C on both sides of the cable also means that the power adapter also has a USB-C input as opposed to a Type-A input. And this should allow for some fast charging speeds right out of the box. Although charging speeds could get even faster if you use a 27 watt USB-C power adapter as opposed to this power adapter which is 18 watts. I'll give a link to good ones in the description. Now getting back to the phone itself, I'll first remove the protective plastic. Honestly, feeling this phone for the first time, it feels a lot better than I expected. I wasn't too fond of the design after watching the Google presentation, but the phone does feel premium and nice to hold. The just black color also looks very sleek and professional. The Pixel 2 XL has a 6-inch QHD Plus P-OLED display, 4 gigs of RAM, an 8 megapixel front camera, and front firing speakers. It runs on the Snapdragon 835 chipset and Android 8.0 or Android Oreo out of the box and we'll get every Android update first. This phone comes in two storage options of 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes, but Google will include unlimited storage of photos and videos for free until the end of 2020. On the back, you'll find its single 12.2 megapixel lens that can record 4K at up to 30 frames per second, 1080p at up to 120 frames per second, and 720p at up to 240 frames per second. I'll definitely be putting this camera up against the Note 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus in the near future, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. When the Pixel 2 XL was first announced, I was unsure at how the phone physically compared to phones already out right now. So I thought it would be cool to show a physical comparison between this phone and the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. First off, all three phones have surprisingly very similar footprints. The indent in your pocket won't be that much different with any of these devices. However, the screen size of the three phones vary. The Note 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and Pixel 2 XL have screen sizes of 6.3, 5.5, and 6 inches respectively. Samsung was able to pull off the biggest screen to body ratio out of the three at 83.6%. The iPhone 8 Plus was the worst out of the three at 67.7%, while the new Pixel 2 XL gets right in between these two with a ratio of 76.4%. We can give the new Pixel 2 XL a slight break because Google was able to put two front-firing speakers on the new device. The speakers on the Pixel 2 XL are placed in positions where they won't be covered when holding the device, like in the other two phones. The iPhone 8 Plus uses its bottom bezel to put its Touch ID sensor. Looking at the bottom of the phones, you'll notice right off the bat that the Note 8 is the only phone out of the three to maintain a headphone jack. The other two phones will only be able to use wired headphones if you use their respective included dongles. 
Looking at the back of the phones, you can see that Google has deviated from the dual camera trend of 2017 by sticking with a single lens system. It should be noted that the Note 8 and iPhone 8 Plus will be able to use their second telephoto lenses for 2 times optical zoom. Although the Pixel 2 does not have a second lens for optical zoom, Google has claimed that using AI and machine learning, you will still be able to get amazing portrait effects on both the front and rear of cameras despite the single lens. The Note 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus both have glass backs that allow for the devices to use wireless charging, which the new Pixel phone cannot. The Pixel 2's back is mostly aluminum with glass on the top section of the device. The Note 8 and Pixel 2 both have their fingerprint sensors on the back with the Pixel's placement being a lot more reachable by any person operating the phone. The new Pixels don't have one feature that makes it stand out from the crowd, but it's the first Google phone that has me genuinely excited to try out. Stay tuned for more in-depth comparisons and reviews involving the Google Pixel 2 XL. And if you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. I'm working on a ton of new content right now, so please click the logo down below to subscribe and make sure the notification bell is clicked to stay up to date on my latest videos. Check the description for links to my social media accounts, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.